Have you heard that people who go on a cruise gain an average of between five and 10 pounds on a seven day cruise? It's absolutely true, but I am gonna tell you how to avoid this even if you love cruise food and drinks. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewallcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now I have to tell you right away, I love cruise food, I like drinks on a cruise, but at the same time, like many of you, I struggle with the idea of not wanting to come back like 10 pounds heavier than I started seven days before. So over the years of cruising, I've developed some well tips and tricks and I've learned from other people as well on how to avoid gaining weight on a cruise or at least as much weight on a cruise and as well to reduce bloating on a cruise because it definitely is something that has affected me in the past. I don't know if it's affected you. Please let me know in the comments below. Now, some of these tips will be familiar, but I guarantee there will be at least one or two and hopefully even more that you will have never heard before and that will be super helpful for you on your next cruise. Now, before I get started, I did wanna mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative or enjoyable in any way, then please do give the video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, let's get started. So the first tip has to do with cruise food itself. Now, I think there's a misconception that a lot of people have that when you go on a cruise, that a lot of the food is greasy and fattening and you can't really eat healthy on a cruise. And this is absolutely false. You definitely can eat healthy on a cruise. And I think in many cases, it's easier than on a land vacation because you have just such a wide variety of foods that you can choose from. Now, something that I found on a cruise is I could even go to the buffet, I could find some really nice salads, and then I can go over to the grill and I can get some fresh fish or maybe some chicken that is grilled, and it's absolutely delicious. Now, even in the main dining room, you'll be able to look on the menu and you'll be able to find some heart healthy options, some other options that are just maybe lower in calories or prepared in a way that is healthier for you. Now, even if you are on some sort of diet or lifestyle plan, whether it's keto, WW, intermittent fasting, you could still continue to eat this way while you're on a cruise. Now, if you do wanna keep those portions a little bit smaller in the main dining room, you can ask the waiter to have a smaller portion. You can ask the waiter to maybe not have the rice or the pasta on the plate, and you could just ask for a larger portion of vegetables. Now, personally, I like to indulge when I'm on a cruise, so sometimes what I do is I just ask for a smaller portion of that main item, or sometimes you can even find it in an appetizer size. Now, an example of this is the fettuccine alfredo which I think is quite delicious on Princess Cruises. You can have this in an appetizer size. So if you don't wanna have that very large portion of pasta, ask for the appetizer size and then eat it with a salad on the side. And of course, just like a restaurant at home, you can ask for dressing on the side or you can ask for a balsamic dressing. So you can keep that a little bit lighter as well. Now, if you love cruise food and you don't wanna cut back too, too much on the cruise food, what you'll wanna do is increase the movement that you do every day on a cruise. And honestly, on a cruise ship, it's easier than anywhere else that I've ever been to incorporate movement. So one of the ways is just walk every day. The cruise ship is an amazing place to go walking or running if you do run, but you can walk along the promenade deck and you will just have those incredible ocean views and as well you can walk along the jogging track maybe try to do like a half an hour in the morning time when you wake up or even in the afternoon or even before dinner it's just such a great way to get extra movement in while you're on a cruise now something that i like to do is take the stairs as much as possible so oftentimes when i'm choosing my cabin i intentionally choose my cabin to be like three decks below the pool or the buffet deck. And the reason that I do that is this way, when I do head up to the buffet and the pool, which I do several times a day, at least like three or four times, then each time I'm always taking the stairs up or down. Now, if you can take the stairs quite a lot during your cruise, you'll be surprised at how many calories that you could burn during your cruise. And that does help to give you a little bit more leeway for the food that you do eat. Now, it's a good idea to bring some sort of step counter or some sort of movement counter. So whether it's your Apple Watch, your Fitbit, or even just an app on your phone, it could be a little bit motivating to see how many steps that you're doing in a day. When we've looked at this before, I've easily done, just like on the cruise ship itself, like without even trying, I've done like 15,000 steps in a day. When I really try, I'm probably up to 20,000 steps. And just a little tip, when you are off the cruise ship and you are shopping or sightseeing, even when you don't think that you're getting movement in, 
keep that Apple Watch or Fitbit with you or whatever, and you'll notice how many steps that you do even on those port days. It's incredible. You can probably do 25 or even 30,000 steps if you're doing a walking tour as a shore excursion. Now, another really good tip to avoid that weight gain on a cruise, and it also really helps to reduce bloating, is to drink water, a lot of it. Keep hydrated during your cruise, but add lemons to it. When you add lemon slices to your water, it acts as a natural diuretic. So this really helps to avoid bloating and swelling, which many of us do tend to get when we're traveling and especially when we're on a cruise and we're maybe eating a little bit, well, of saltier and richer foods. Now, if you wanna go a little bit of a step further, you could sometimes have hot water with lemon. And this is supposed to actually help not only to be a bit of a diuretic, but even to be a little bit of a mild laxative as well. So if you do find that you tend to get bloated and a little bit backed up during a cruise, this is a little simple way that you could kind of help that along a little. Now it's really important to watch those drinks on a cruise and this is especially true if you have a beverage package. Now I speak from personal experience here because a few years ago it was the first time I had a beverage package on a Norwegian cruise and I ended up drinking quite a lot of banana daiquiris well early in the cruise and I was more bloated than I usually would be during a cruise so I particularly noticed it here and of course when I looked up the ingredients in the banana daiquiri there was vanilla ice cream in them. Basically, I was drinking milkshakes, like probably a few a day, so not a good idea. So I did realize after that cruise that I really had to watch those drinks on a cruise, especially if I had the beverage package. So I found a few skinny little drinks that I will tell you some tips. So, so of course what you can do is have those drinks that are mixed with a club soda. So that of course does work, but if you want something a little bit tastier, I do have a couple of little hacks or tricks. So ask the bartender to make this version of a skinny mojito and it doesn't taste exactly like a mojito but it is pretty good so it's diet sprite and then you ask them to put a flavored rum in it so i particularly like like flavored mango rum now they don't put too too much so that's where your calories are after that they're going to add lime and mint and muddle it up and it's really quite delicious now another drink that i like to have is diet sprite then coconut rum and a splash of pineapple juice with a little sliver of pineapple on the corner. And that's quite a delicious drink as well. And it really has a lot less calories than a pina colada. Now, if you can have a glass of wine in the evening rather than a martini, that's also going to be a lower calorie drink in comparison, especially to those dessert style martinis. Now, if you'd really love to have any of these drinks, do have them once in a while, but the trick is to have some balance and not to have like six a day. Now, the other thing to watch for is specialty coffee. So especially if you have that specialty coffee, maybe you're drinking a little bit more of those dessert style coffees than you would on a regular basis at home. And they can really add up in ways that you wouldn't notice except on the scale. So instead of those higher calorie specialty coffee options, try to go for a skinny latte or an Americana with just that little bit of natural foam on top. Now, many cruise ships have different venues where you can get healthier fare on a cruise. And this was something that didn't really exist like 15 or 20 years ago, but now you've got the Aqua Spa Cafe on Celebrity. You even have the International Cafe on Princess. You have in Royal Caribbean, the Solarium Cafe, where you could find a lot of healthier fare items. They are absolutely delicious. They're visually so appealing and appetizing. So try to go for that and maybe skip the pizza or the big burgers and fries. Go for that, especially for a nice lunch. You might be surprised how delicious and how satisfying that is. Now, something that I highly suggest is visit the fitness center or the gym on the very first day of the cruise, or at least the first morning. So for a couple of reasons. First of all, you can start the habit off right at the very beginning of the cruise. But the second reason is, even if you're not somebody who usually is going to a gym at home, you might be surprised at the classes that are interesting to you. So this can become an activity, something that you could do on the cruise and enjoy. And you also might be surprised at how comfortable you feel in the gym on a cruise ship. It really isn't like one of these bodybuilder gyms. There are people of all different sizes, of all different fitness levels that are just doing some activity in a gym. And it really can be a really nice place to be on a cruise and guaranteed it will give you movement. It will keep you motivated on your cruise to look your best and to feel your best. Consider eating at an earlier dining time. It's just a little bit better for your digestion if you can eat somewhere around 6 or 6.30, even 7 p.m. But if you're 
you're eating at 8.30 or 9 p.m., sometimes you're going to bed on a really full stomach and it's just not a great feeling. And oftentimes we do tend to get a little bit more bloated if we do eat late at night right before bed. Find the fun things to do on a cruise that include movement. Now that could be joining the silent disco or going dancing at nighttime on a cruise. You could also find the Zumba classes and you can find the dance classes and the other exercise classes. It can just be a lot of fun. Even if it's just doing the cha-cha slide by the pool, that is a great way to get some extra movement and allow yourself those extra indulgences on your cruise. Now, a lot of the tips that I mentioned so far are pretty good for kind of maintaining your weight during your cruise or not gaining too much. But if you really wanna really kind of be a little bit more careful, there are a few extra things that you can do. So just like a restaurant at home, just skip the bread basket. While the bread is good on a cruise, honestly, you've had bread and rolls before, so skip those. Maybe ask the waiter not even to pass with them at all. Now something else that you can do is right before you even start your meal is order a fruit plate for the end of your meal. So whether this is on the dessert menu or not, just order this. And this is definitely a healthier option than the desserts that are going to be on the dessert menu. And in this way, you could completely skip the dessert menu. You already know that you have a nice, healthy dessert coming. Now, during the day, if you are an ice cream lover, look for the frozen yogurt instead. Oftentimes there is some frozen yogurt or have a small scoop of sorbet. That is something really nice as well. Or even have more of that fresh fruit. It is just delicious on a cruise. Now, personally, I just really love salsa and nachos. So if you're like me, what you can do is just portion out your nachos. Maybe get like 12 or 15 nachos and a nice bowl of salsa. Salsa has like no calories. You could even add some raw vegetables that you find in the buffet. So some carrots and some cauliflower. And then you can have that as a nice afternoon snack. Now, if you've ever been affected by your legs getting swollen on a cruise or your ankles getting swollen on a cruise, I have a very unique tip that really does work. And I learned this from other cruisers on a past cruise. Now, what it is, and ideally start it from the very beginning of the cruise, is you'll want to prop your legs up against the wall, like if you're lying on your bed in the cabin, prop your legs straight up against the wall and hold that for about eight minutes. And you'll wanna do that in the morning time when you wake up, at nighttime before you go to bed, even midday, I'd say do it at least once. So maybe sometime you come back to your cabin, maybe before you go take a shower and you get ready for your dinner, do that. You could even do it by the pool. You can prop your legs up. They don't have to be straight up, but you can prop your legs up on the back of your lounge chair. Just prop your legs up a little bit and that's just going to drain all of the fluids kind of back towards your heart. Now, I was a little bit skeptical of this, but I did meet other people and they were doing this. They did look phenomenal, by the way, and they explained it to me. And honestly, what I did first is I actually Googled it. I found a lot of evidence for why this worked and then I tried it and it really did work. And especially when I did this at the end of the day, when I was out in the sun, it really seemed to help before dinner. Now, if you've ever tried this before, or if you have any other tips that help with swelling and gaining weight on a cruise, please let me know in the comments below. And I have one more very practical tip, and it's not about not gaining weight on a cruise, but it is what to wear on a cruise. And it is that you'll want to plan your outfits that you're wearing, your tighter outfits at the beginning of the cruise. This is just so practical, but in reality, a lot of us are still indulging on a cruise and we're eating things that are maybe higher in fat, higher in salt, a little bit sweeter, and we will maybe get a little bit bloated in our stomach area. So you do want to wear your tighter, more form-fitting clothing at the beginning of your cruise and save your looser clothing towards the end. Now, if you'd like to know more about what to wear on a cruise, I'm going to leave a video right after this one all about what to wear on a cruise for the day, the evening, and formal wear. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.